So we're going to be going over the installation of the vertical hydroponic four tower DIY kit. Now I wanted to start out by just going over the finished product and talking a little bit about how it works. On your left you see that black container, that's your nutrient reservoir. That's going to have a pump and timer in it. And it's basically going to pump your nutrient solution up those white lines and into your containers. And all your containers have holes in the bottom of it so it allows the nutrients just to drip from container to container until all your plants get fed. Once you get the kit from Amazon or verticalhydroponic.com, it's going to have everything you need except for that nutrient reservoir and then the four steel poles. The reservoir we recommend is the Commander XXL 27 gallon tote. Lowe's item number is 44066. But you actually can use any kind of reservoir. We commonly use 55 gallon drums that we get used off of Craigslist. Um, and some people can use uh, trash cans, I mean, any, anything that can hold a nutrient solution mix really. The steel poles are 3 quarter inch by 10 foot EMT conduit. The Lowe's item number is 72713, but you can certainly get those at any hardware store. And those steel poles come in 10 foot lengths, and we're actually not going to need all that. So we're just going to have to mark it at 82 inches, and then cut that with a hacksaw. And now mark your poles at 14 inches, and this is just going to be the mark that's just going to let us know how far we're going to drive them into the ground. Then lay your measuring tape across the area you want to install the towers and separate your poles about every three to four feet. And now we're going to drive those poles into the ground at 14 inches to where that mark is level with the ground. So we start out just by putting a nut that comes in the kit on the top of the poles just to protect the poles a bit. And then you just drive them into the ground. We're using a pole uh, driver here. That's actually pretty cheap. It's about $15 if you don't have one. But you can also just use a ladder and a mallet. I mean, you need a, mount, a ladder just to get up to the height where you can um, drive them into the ground a little bit easier. But if you use the pole driver, you don't need that ladder. Then take your level just to make sure that the poles are level in the ground. And if they're a little bit off, you can just nudge it until it gets level. Next, drop your PVC pieces over your poles and then drop your swivel plates on top of that. And those are going to hold your containers up and also allow them to rotate so that they can get a full range of sunlight. And now it's time to expand our cocoa choir. And that's going to be part of the growing medium that we're using in all of our containers. And so it comes dehydrated, so we just need to pretty much we go ahead and pour it into a plastic container with holes in it. Um, most of the time people can just use recycling bins or really any plastic container with holes in it for that matter because you're just going to fill it up with water and then take a shovel and just mix it all up in there just to let it soak in all the water. And then having the holes in the bottom of the container allows that water to drain out after the cocoa choir has been expanded. You want to do that process a couple times just to make sure that you can get all the salts that might have built up out of your cocoa choir. So next you're going to take your perlite which comes in the kit. You can go ahead and put it in a wheelbarrow and then take your expanded cocoa choir and put it in the wheelbarrow as well and just mix them together. So these two components are going to be your growing medium that your plants are going to be growing in. Take your shovel and go ahead and fill up all your containers with that growing medium mix. Take your plant starters and put one in each of the four corners of all your containers. You can get plant starters at any garden store or nursery, but um, we actually like to use hoarder cubes because it's way cheaper to just plant by seeds after you get these hoarder cubes and kind of make your own starters is what you're doing essentially. Go ahead and take your containers and stack them up your poles and they kind of lock into place and you can see there the bottom corners of your containers just fit right into those notches. Take the PVC tees that come in your kit and place them on top of each one of your towers. Take the large 16 foot white tubing and slide it through the tees with the end cap on the side opposite of the reservoir. Take your 4 foot white tubing and just attach to the top of that pump. Then just plug the timer into your pump. Attach your 4 and 16 foot tubing using the black connector piece. And just like the pump, you just have to slide it over the nipples and then just twist down to clamp it down. Take out the yellow punch tool and punch a hole in the white tubes about 3 inches from each of your towers. Then take the clear micro lines and put them into each of the holes you just punched. Then take the little black clip and just clip down those micro lines to your pole. Fill up your reservoir with water. Add one teaspoon of bio nectar per gallon to your reservoir. Then add a quarter teaspoon of Epsom salts per gallon to your reservoir. Then we're going to check our pH. Usually the pH is pretty good if you add the nutrients correctly. 
but we still want to check and just make sure so go ahead and fill up the small vial that came in your pH test kit with some of your solution and add three drops of your testing solution to that. The range you're looking for is 5.5 to 6.5 which is going to show up in your vial as kind of a yellowish gold color. If you are a little bit off we have some pH up and down so depending on if you're too high pH or too low just go ahead and add a little bit of up or down and then mix it and go ahead and recheck. Now you're ready to set your timers to water three times a day. Go ahead and hook your pump up to a power source and you should be good to go. And just FYI, these are the results from our latest grow this winter. So we had some different lettuces that we put in a greenhouse and the results are pretty good after several weeks.